Welcome to Lesson 5 of Learn Biblical Hebrew. Today we're going to tackle our first complete verse. And the verse is a very famous one. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And here it is, Genesis 1, 1. Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashimayim wa et Haaretz. This time I've printed it out uh, landscape to give me a little bit more room. And again, you can find this and the text of this lesson uh, on my blog, logosword.wordpress.com. So our procedure is to turn it over and fold it in half. And then in half again, top and bottom now we do our letter by letter translation and our first consonant is a new one this is the letter B I'll write it over here to give me a bit more room I hope the dot inside it means that it's pronounced B, not V, as it sometimes is. Then I think every other letter we've had, there's an R, there's the B, there's a SH, and there's a T. Now the second word begins with a B also, followed by R followed by the uh. This next word begins with uh, then it has an L, then it has an H, then it has an M. This next word uh, T, the next word H, SH, M, M. Notice again the two different forms of the M, different at the end of the word. Now the vowels, here's the uh, vowel, and this is a new one, the double horizontal vowel. All these have names, these vowels and the little symbols as well, they all have names. If you're interested to know them, you can look up a, 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 book, a textbook or something that will give you all the names, but uh, I can't remember half them myself and it's sufficient for our purposes just to call this the double vertical dot and the double horizontal dot and the double horizontal dot indicates the longer E so we'll write it with an E bar like that um, sheet and this is an I vowel the in this case the Y just works with this uh, vowel symbol to indicate the vowel so we're not taking it as a Y we're just taking it as a vowel indicator now this next word has two long A's and here again is a new vowel symbol actually it's two together that we've met this little triangle dot is the ordinary E and the two putting the two vertical dots beside it just means shorten it a bit but we'll simply just write it with E and now this dot here indicates an O vowel and the dot goes just between the two consonants up there to indicate the O vowel and again here we have these two working together to give us an I sound here we have an E here we have an A and again this should be doubled but I've just written it once being squeezed for space a bit uh, whoops show my M here that E should be there 
So we've got an A there, a long A there, a short A there, and then an E there. Now, under the W is the little uh vowel, which we're writing like that. And then there's, again, that um, longer E. Now, R uh, and R. Uh, and a yeah Breshit bara Elohim et Hashemaim et Haaretz I think we're much better off if we just learn the Hebrew letters and forget this rather messy letter by letter attempt to put it into English So now the word-by-word -word translation, Bereshit, and the B at the beginning means in. In. It's joined to the word which follows it, Reshit, which means beginning. Next word is a new word, Bara which means created. It's a special word used only of God creating things. The only subject that it takes is God. And here, this new word is the word for God, Elohim, God. Before we've had Yahweh, which is God's name, and this is really God's title, God his title as God. Uh, like Shamaim, it has a plural ending. But like Shamaim, we don't really take it to mean plural. Sometimes it can when the word is used perhaps in a different sense of a, a minor God or an angel or occasionally, something like that. But when it refers to the one God, it's regarded as the plural of majesty. So it's this is saying God. Now it indicates the object. So I suppose I could write that down, which we don't translate into English. Um, the ha is the heavens. And the little at the beginning of this word means and. Again, it's joined with the word. Here was this word f by itself, and here it is with the uh, w joined to it, which means and. And, object, the earth. So, Brechit bara Elohim et Hashemaim wa et Haaretz. In modern Hebrew, this wa is pronounced as a, a V, but in classical Hebrew, uh, it was pronounced as a W. So, we say wa et Haaretz. And uh, now, make our translation, and we'll go from right to left. In the beginning. Notice there was no word for the. Here it just says in beginning. But it's traditionally translated as in the beginning and there are good reasons for uh, inserting the, the word the which is really required in English but some of the reasons behind it are a little bit technical. We won't worry too much about it right now. Or just translate in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. I think it, it flows better without the the. Some translations will say the heavens and the earth, but uh, in my opinion, it runs better if we just with the 
as far as English is concerned here, just to leave out the da and just say, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Notice how the verb comes before the subject, which is typical in Hebrew. First we have the time indicator, then the verb, and then the subject, and then the two objects, each marked by eth. So that's a typical <coughs> structure in Hebrew, to have the verb, subject, and then object, unlike English, which usually has um, subject, verb, object. So there we have it, a majestically brief, simple, and to the point statement. Do you ever wonder how everything came into being? The Big Bang, as currently put forward by science, underlines this question. How did it all start? In fact, who started it all? We know that the force of the initial bang, so-called bang, had to be set with amazing precision. If it wasn't strong enough, it would just be a big boing and everything would expand and then gravity would pull everything back again in a big boing. But if it was too strong, the force of the initial expansion, everything would go shooting off too fast into oblivion. So what we kind of jokingly call the Big Bang actually fits quite well with, with Genesis especially when we realize that it was set with amazing precision, far more precision than any human instruments have yet managed to reach. Um, so this puts in front of everyone, whether they believe in God or not, a big question. How could that have been set up so amazingly accurately? Let alone the question of how could everything have been created out of nothing. Well, the truth of Genesis 1 has for a long time been accepted by Western society, and this was, in my view, and in the view of many people a lot smarter than me, the basis of the quest of Western science to find out the design and the purpose and the rationale, the rational principles underlying the universe. And it gave Western science scientists the confident the confidence that a design was there to be found if only they looked hard enough. When Kepler solved the problem of the planetary orbits, he wrote, Oh, almighty God, I am thinking your thoughts after you. Genesis 1.1 Breshith bara Elohim eth hashemayim wa eth haaretz In the beginning created God, God created the heavens and the earth. Bereshith bara Elohim et Hashemaim wa et Haaretz. The scientist's quest has been very successful and the truth of Genesis 1-1 continues to shine even though ironically modern science tries to keep God out of the picture. 